Hi, and welcome to my video. Please allow me to introduce myself. I am a Hyper Alpha GigaChad Pog Champion that is very talented at all aspects of RuneScape, especially PVM. Therefore, it is with great honor that I would like to introduce you to my appropriately named Iron Man account, Chadventure whose sole purpose, calling, and motivation is to absolutely pog out within the tombs of a mascot. Hey everybody, Chadventure here bringing you episode 13 of the TOA Rush Iron Man series, where we're looking to complete TOA with minimalistic stats and gear on an Iron Man, with our current goal being to complete a solo normal mode raid. In the previous episode, we unlocked a rune pouch, attached our Throat of Elodinus to it to make the Divine Rune Pouch, and completed a kingdom divided for the ability to summon thralls. With these crucial unlocks, we have a lot more flexibility with our raids now. Previously, I had been running Money 50s, with the hopes of pulling a Fang, Lightbearer, or Yellow Gem, and then pushing from 150s from there. My metric for pogging out has been measuring improvement via beating my personal best time for each raid in order to prioritize raids per hour, but with the consistent DPS from Thralls, I think it's about time we attempt a solo normal raid. However, there are some Iron Man chores we had to do first to prepare, so without any further delay, let's begin episode 13. Enchanted Ruby Bolts are going to be essential for my raids, so let's try our luck out at Soul Wars to get some. Here we go, that should be the 5th kill which will end the game, and now we have 60 zeal, that's enough for 2 crates, hopefully we can get lucky. With the bolts taken care of, our next task leads us to Scurious, my only source of range bots. Plus I'm close to the attack level, so why not? There it is, ladies and gentlemen, level 81 attack. One more level, and we can potentially wield a fang if we pull one. Poggers, there's a shark drop. That's actually my highest source of healing that I have. Definitely going to be useful for a 150 attempt. Scurious Spine coming in on KC 98. That's good. That's actually free prayer XP, and I'm still trying to chunk away towards unlocking piety. One more prayer level to go. Here is 100 KC at the Rat Boss. Unfortunately, no more ranging pots, but this is where I'm going to call it. 100 looks clean for the high scores, and I'm going to go ahead and get myself one more upgrade, and then it's back into TOA. The final upgrade that I'm looking to attain for now is the Major Arena 1 Cape. This isn't a huge upgrade, but it will give me six-way switches for each combat style, which makes gear switching and inventory management much easier. Mage Arena 1, completed. Now we get to choose a cape, which is kind of like choosing your first Pokemon. For the Mage Arena 1 capes, you can take all three varieties, no big deal. But for the Mage Arena 2 capes, there's a little more work involved if you want all of them, so I'll be starting with just one cape. But similarly to choosing a first Pokemon, I'm conflicted on which god cape to choose. The Ceridoman cape looks great with ancestral robes, the Guthix cape looks incredible with the twisted kitted version, and the Zami cape looks insane with the tunic and shadow. So there's really no easy choice. Comment which one's your favorite, maybe I'll also run a poll to see what the chads and the audience think, but I will be doing Major Arena 2 after I unlock the charge spell to make things faster and easier, so there's still a little bit of time to decide. Here we go, this is essentially what I was looking for. With this cape, we now have six-way switches for each of the combat styles, which will be really convenient for swapping gear and managing our inventory space. Finally time to return to TOA. I'm going to do one last hurrah at the 55 invocation raid level because I want to beat my PB. I haven't raided with Thralls and Ruby Bolt C yet, so this should be pretty quick. Then we'll bump up the raid level. Don't mind the Lizard Kicker pre-pot either. I'm saving the range pots for the 150 attempts. 82 range and 1575 total level. We are a true pog champion now. With thralls and the major in a cape, we meet the DPS check on Akka's shadows any day of the week. Well, at least in a 50 invocation raid. We'll see how it goes at higher invos. Here is the challenge of butterflying, maintaining the cycle after specials end. No, I think we're good to go. That should be back in cycle. Now the challenge would be he's about to phase. There it is, 40%. Maintaining the cycle while switching quadrants is also kind of challenging. We'll probably have to stall a tick here. Wait for it. And now we are back in the butterfly cycle. Not bad at all. Mm, 
Onwards to the c phase. I mean, the bukakalypse. Wish me luck with the bone dagger spec. No way Zebek switches to mage now. I have to click the skull and my prayer in the same tick. What is this, Awaken Vardorvis? Just kidding. It's not a huge deal. I don't have Insanity on. And even if I did, I did that tick perfectly, so it wouldn't have mattered. And there we go. New personal best achieved. The Thralls with the bolts definitely makes a big difference. We could almost do two raids an hour. Let's get our pants off, hearts up for good luck, and maybe we'll pull the entry mode purple. Never lucky. That's all right. Here comes the pet and the yellow gem. Same chest. Nope. Or not. Maybe... Damn it. Never ran our seeds either. Unfortunate. All right. I decided to do one more level 55 invocation raid, but look at these times, man. We can definitely do two raids an hour if I got my stats up a little bit higher. Let's see if we get ourselves a purple here. Never purple. And never pet or gem either. I guess it's probably time to increase the raid level. Alright, time to bump up the raid level. I'm going to start with a level 100 raid, just to see if it's even remotely viable to try out a 150 with our stats and gear. Adding more invocations to a raid does add some complexity, but that's not really what I'm worried about. I'm worried about the defense scaling. Adding more invocations scales the maximum hit, HP, and defense of all the enemies in the raid. HP is no problem, max hit's only an issue for chip damage encounters, but the defense is going to be really annoying. This is a grotesque oversimplification of how DPS works in Old School RuneScape, but you can think of it as two dice, your die and your opponent's die. The highest number on your die is based off of your stats and gear, which will be a low number if your stats are low and your gear is bad. But you can roll a 1 up to this maximum number. The highest number on your opponent's die is based off their defense level and stats, and this number will be higher if their defense is higher. Again, they can roll a 1 up to this maximum number. In order to land an attack, you have to roll a number higher than your opponent's. With my current stats and gear, we can think of my die as being like a six-sided die. I can roll a number from one to six. And the raid bosses, since their defense is scaled, you can think of them as having a 12-sided die, meaning they can roll a number from one to 12. There are instances where I can land a higher number than theirs, like if I roll a five and they roll a four, but a six-sided die has a much smaller chance of rolling a number larger than what a 12-sided die can roll. Or in RuneScape terms, I'm gonna hit a lot of zeros. Again, this is a simplification for illustrative purposes. There's a lot more complexity that I've left out. For an excellent breakdown of how DPS works, check out Wozware's video on the subject. I've linked it in the description down below. But let's go ahead and send a Money 100 raid. Let's load up our Money 100 preset. Everything is scaled twice as high as a 50, so wish me luck. Yo, Poggers, I just hit 111 damage. That's wild. Well, I failed the DPS check, and then I f***ed up the DPS skip. The defense increase is definitely noticeable. Not going particularly well for Akka. And there we go, money 100 completed. Honestly, not terrible overall with the exception of, like, Akka, I guess. It did yield us an extra 0.3% chance at a purple, so let's see if we have one here. We do not have a purple. That's okay, maybe the chest is good. I guess that's okay. But I guess that means we can probably try a 150. This was pretty smooth. Before we get to the 150 raid level, I had this happen doing a clue scroll on my laptop. Typically, if I feature a laptop clip, I cut out the audio, but I've decided to leave it in so you can have my genuine reaction. Come on, show me the ham joint. Let's see it. Hello? Hello? <gasps> oh my god! No way I actually got it! No! <laughs> That's insane! Fuck TOA, we're going to top! Chadventure, whose sole purpose, calling, and motivation is to absolutely pog out within the theater of blood. For real though, we're going to top in the next episode. But let's get back to TOA. Sorry about that. The time has finally come. Let's attempt a solo normal mode raid. Let me screenshot the invocations to put them on screen. And look at this defense, 60%. 
three times what we would see in a 50. Wish me luck. Of course, we will be committing our ranging pots from Scurious in our pre-pot. No lizard kickers for 150s. Give me a big bone dagger. Ooh, 19. Very nice. Okay, followed by the ruby proc. Maybe I was overly concerned about defense. I am running the upset stomach invocation, so I have to be really on point with my jug solves for the acid phase. As you can see, it only clears one tile of acid. Maybe all the fun Kefri puzzles are locked behind 150s. This is a satisfying one. I have opted to not try to butterfly Akka the entire time, as I couldn't meet the DPS check in a 100, so I'm definitely not going to make it in a 150. In fact, using my best DPS output, which is range, I still can't even make the DPS check. Okay, that is the Baba puzzle completed, but oh, I am kind of worried about my supplies. I used a lot of Akka in this puzzle. Let's see what we have left. Oh my god. Oh. Okay, this is probably not doable, but I have a strategy that might let us complete it. Let's see if this will work. If I suicide to Baba, I get all of my health and prayer back, as well as some of the honey locusts which heal prayer and health. Oh wow, and the game so graciously gave me two. I have to save my salt for Warden so it's not like a 20 down, so I guess I'm gonna commit my own supplies to try to see if we can finish this. Yep, we don't one-shot the boulders unsalted. That really sucks. Most likely GG's. I don't think I can come back from this. Damn it, man. I used so much of my own supplies, too. That really hurts. If I used the salt, I probably could have cleared Baba and gotten to Wardens, but there's a chance that I don't get salt again when I pick Chaos, and I definitely need it so that it doesn't end up being like a 20 down for killing the core. That really sucks. I have one more life, but I don't want to risk dying with my pet, so I think I'm just going to restart. Time to run it back. If I make less mistakes at Akka and don't get ragged as hard during the Baba puzzle, this should be fine, I think. I guess we'll see how it goes. All right, first two rooms cleared. Let's see what the helpful spirit has for us. All right, we have two salts this time. So if we have a fiasco like the previous raid, that should be circumvented by having two salts, I guess. We have made it back to Baba for the rematch of the century. And look at these supplies. We're doing so much better. This should be free, unless I really, really fuck up. I probably should learn Red X to make this consistently free, but Baba was no problem. Let's grab our supplies from the Helpful Spirit, and we'll take on the Wardens. With my stats, gear, lack of light bearer, and liquid adrenaline, this ended up being a 4 down in a 150. Brutal. Holy shit, we did it. A solo, normal mode raid on the iron. It took us like an hour. Look at our percentage though, almost 2% chance at a unique. And this is at any unique, not just a fang or light bearer like you would see in an entry mode. Despite it being probably faster to do two level 50 raids an hour rather than a singular 150, we have a chance at any unique. So let's see that purple chest. I mean, we could potentially have a Tumic and Shadow or Masori, anything. Or we could have a white light. That sucks. Unfortunate. Wow, and our chest was dog shit too. 44k. Whatever though, we soloed a 150 on the Iron Man. That's a huge accomplishment to be honest with you. Here is the stats and gear that I completed the solo 150 in, and maybe this can serve as inspiration to those who doubt their capabilities. You don't need a team to carry you, you don't need maximum combat stats, you don't need access to Ceridome and Brews and Super Restorers, you don't need a Trident, you don't need Zenite Jewelry, you can do this with a Power Amulet and Rune Plate Legs, just like me. I didn't even do anything fancy for this completion. I didn't butterfly Akka this time around, I don't know how to Red X Baba yet, and I really only want to flick my prayer for Zebek and Kefri. I guess having the unwavering focus to not make a singular mistake while fighting a brick wall for almost an entire hour helps, but probably isn't necessary. Also, being subscribed to the Chadventure YouTube channel definitely helps a lot. But now we have to reassess our definition of what pogging out in TOA means, since we completed our solo 150 goal. I'm thinking the next goal is to complete a solo expert mode raid. I'm also kind of conflicted on what raid level I should continue to pursue. With money 50s, I can complete about 2 an hour for a combined 2% chance at a Fanger Lightbearer, and I only have to commit about a singular prayer pot. With 150s, I can maybe complete 1 an hour for a 1.9% chance at any unique, 
but I have to pretty much commit all of the supplies I bring in. I'm leaning towards 150s, but I'm curious what you all think, so let me know in the comments. But here is where I'm going to end the episode. In the next episode, we're going to send some more raids in hopes of obtaining a purple to help us push for a solo expert mode completion. And we also end up going to all three raids, so definitely make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out. I also have done a terrible job at hosting events with my community, and I would like to change that. If you want to join myself and our army of chads in some raids, please feel free to join the Discord in the description down below. In any case, thank you all for watching, and I will catch you in the next episode.